ESPN's coverage of the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series on ABC. Brought to you by Amp Energy. You could win the ultimate Talladega RV for next year's race. Enter to win at AmpEnergy.com. Chevy, the most wins in NASCAR history. That's an American revolution. McDonald's, I'm loving it. And New Line Cinema's new motion picture, Pride and Glory, in theaters October 24th. Kevin Harvick, the leader here in the Amp Energy 500 at Talladega. Looking down on this massive two and two thirds mile track as these cars zoom around from Goodyear. Our aerial coverage brought to you by Goodyear. Get there on silent armor technology with the strength of Kevlar for toughness and a comfortable ride. What a day here at Talladega so far. 26 of the 43 starters have led 53 lead changes and we're just past 300 miles of this 500 mile event. Kevin Harvick, one of the championship chasers, is up front. In fact, most of the championship chasers have fared well today, though Jeff Gordon has spent time in the garage after uh, getting caught up in a crash, and Denny Hamlin is being transported to a local hospital after he had a hard crash while leading this race just a short time ago. On the lead lap, 27 of the 43 starters. Every one of the championship chasers except Clint Boyer has led this race. And the, the, the main theme on today, well, two main themes on today. One, nobody can hold the lead. The driver that's led the most laps in this race so far has only led 14 laps. And the other theme has been some of the tire issues that we have seen pop up here uh, that have brought out the caution a few times and cost some drivers uh, some torn up race cars. What a race so far. Well, so far the race has been totally unpredictable. Nobody can predict who can hold the lead. We don't know who's, who the strongest car is right now. The DEI cars have looked real good. You know, you look at Chip Ganassi's cars, Juan Pablo Montoya's been up front, he's been in the back. It's yeah. just hard to see who's the strongest You're absolutely now. right, Rusty. But the two guys that keep popping into my eye as I watch the screen, I watch our monitor, is David Reagan, who's running second right now, and Eric Almarola. He has had an outstanding day. He has kept that race car up around that top ten all day long. These two young drivers are having outstanding days. Can't count out Travis Quapel, that white, blue, uh, orange decal, 28 cars started on the pole. The Yates team job. having a strong day. Or Paul Menard. You know, this race in history, you know, Phil Parsons, Bobby Hill, and Ron Bouchard, names <laughs> like that, <laughs> surprise winners. Hey, you could have one of those guys win their first cup race here today. Nine different drivers scored their first win here at Talladega. Seven of those drivers, it was their only cup series win. We'll see if we get a first-time winner today. Uh, by the way, I mentioned uh, the, the leader of the most laps today has only led 14 laps. That's Dale Earnhardt Jr., and he's back in 18th right now. Uh, Doc, keeping an eye on some of these championship guys that are riding around in the back as well. Carl Edwards kind of hanging out at the tail end of this lead draft back in 25th. Hard to figure out how this is going to play out, isn't it? What a wild scramble, Alan. And by the way, this is the longest we green flag run we have had since the first 34 laps of the race. We went back to green to lap 105. And uh, now we're at lap 127, so now everyone watching and wondering what could happen with some of these tires. Let's go down and check in with Dave. With uh, Tony Gibson, he is a crew chief for Eric Almirola in that eight car. Do you think with some of the moves he's made, Tony, which has been impressive and the car has run well, that guys have seen enough to work with him at the end of this race? Yeah, you know, he's still a rookie. He's only got like two restricted play races, but, um, you know, he, he learned a lot here in the spring. He ran really good behind the 24. We had a flat, but... Um, you know, he's doing a phenomenal job. He's being smart. Um, everybody everybody at Dell Earn Incorporated should be proud of themselves. We built brand new race cars to come here. ECR with awesome motors. Uh, and Eric's doing a tremendous job. So uh, he's learning a lot. But, you know, when it comes down to about two to go, you're going to find out how much he's learned. He learned a lot behind the 88. So hopefully maybe Dell Jr. will get back up there. And um, I think we got a friend in him. Running well today, Doc. He mentioned the ECR engines. That's the Earnhardt Childress Engine Cooperative, and they got three cars in the top seven, including the leader, Kevin Harvick. There's Al Marola in the eight car, the 07 there, Clint Boyer. 31 also moving up. That's Jeff Burton. So they got four cars in the top ten. One thing I worry about, we got 60 laps to go, and I don't know if the front bumper on that eight car is going to make it that far. That thing is just <laughs> about worn out. Yeah, the high side's trying to come back. Travis Quaffle back up there, getting a push from uh, Clint Boyer. 
So they're trying to make that work. As you see, the bottom lane's got spread out just a little bit. When Travis Quapel won the poll here on Friday, he got a little bit emotional in the media center. He said, when I was growing up, I watched Davey Allison drive that 28 car here at Talladega. He said, when I got here and I think about the Alabama gang and Davey Allison's memory, I get misty and thinking about what it would mean to take this car back to victory lane. Mike. And this team's confidence was extremely high coming into this race. I spoke with Quapel in pre-race introductions, and he said they made significant gains, but the one area that they re really gained the most is something that no engineer can provide. That's respect. Travis felt like and now that he's run with this series for the entire year, he feels like maybe more people will run with him. He's also got another ace up his sleeve, and that, of course, is Todd Parrott. Now, DJ, I know you know Todd pretty well. How much emphasis does he place on this type of racing? Uh, this is what Todd Parrott loves right here, this type. I know, you know, we had that time between uh, the end of the, the previous season and getting to the Daytona 500. That's all Todd Parrott thought about was getting to the Daytona 500. And when we left the Daytona 500, he was getting ready for Talladega. He puts a lot of emphasis on this and making his cars the very best that he possibly can. And when you get behind the wheel of that, you know that you're going to have a car capable of winning. And I tell you what, he, he talks about that respect. That will also help him in people knowing that Todd Parrott has helped Ed, him get this race car here. So that's going to help Travis in this situation because they know it's a fast car. This is Travis Quapple's 100th career start in the NASCAR Sprint Cup. And how memorable could it be if he could pull it off today? Let's check in on Kevin Harvick, our leader. Jamie? And it could be memorable for him, too. Still looking for his first win since the 2007 Daytona 500. Kevin Harvick's whole plan this entire day was to run up front. Todd Barrier, his crew chief, told me every time we try to stay back and stay in that backpack, we get wrecked. We are going to the front. Even though they started 39th, they've been running up front. Most of the time, the team tells me they are planning on pitting around lap 135. Kevin Harvick has had a vibration all day. See if they can make that a little better on this next stop, Doc. Let's check in. We've been talking about, Jamie, the, the tire issues and the concerns, and uh, good, we have a Goodyear individual down with Dave Burns. That's right. It's Rick Heinrich. He is the product manager for Goodyear. We've seen a lot of failures, Doc, but we don't have a lot of answers yet. Rick, your team has been looking at what's been going on today. What have you discovered so far? Our engineers are still looking at uh, all the tires, sort of reviewing all the details. What we do know, this is the same exact combination of tires that we ran in the spring. We had a very good race on them. It's a race-proving combination of tires. Uh, one of the tires we looked at had 100% evidence of a puncture. When a tire goes flat on the racetrack, it's very destructive. And a lot of times what you need to look at is either still out there on the racetrack or it's just destroyed. Some of the analysis that we're going to have to do, we're going to have to do back in Akron, Ohio. We're going to be collecting everything and sending it back for further analysis to try and find out for sure exactly what's happened. There's a tremendous amount of car contact out there. And that loosens things up and drops things on the track. There's been some accidents. Um, so can't say for sure in every case what's happened. We're still continuing to look at it. Have you asked the teams about their tire pressure today, and are you concerned at all about high tire pressures? And also what about to ask about ambient conditions? Is it a lot warmer than it was in the spring? Not really. Uh, don't feel that the, uh, the ambient temperature really has anything to do with it. We don't see any signs of heat on the tires. Uh, as, as far as air pressures, the teams that we've talked to don't, haven't found anything unusual there at all. Okay, guys, that's what they know for right now. And as Rick mentioned, more analysis when they send these damaged tires back to the main shop in Akron. All right, Dave, thank you. They will now have run 30 laps since uh, they've gone back to green flight racing. And the longest they have run today was 34 laps early on here at the drop of the green. Uh, Rick Heinrich brings up a good point. There is a lot of contact out there, not just side to side like we normally see that would cause a tire problem, but these front to rear bump drafts, we've seen more bump drafts in, in this race than I've ever seen it at Talladega. And some of that, you see the fiberglass is flapping on a lot of these cars. Those little pieces of fiberglass can actually cut a tire too if they're falling off on the racetrack and these guys are catching a piece of that. So that could be a little bit of one of the issues that's going on because there's no theme. We're, we've run, run a lot of laps now and uh, no problems. Other times we've seen problems in like, in like 10 laps. Dave? Yeah, guys, let me throw this one in there too because Casey Mears was speculating with his crew about the possibility of the tolerances being so close with these cars that possibly when they hit each other, whether you're the guy in front of the guy behind, that there's some movement there and there may actually be some car parts, parts of the car with the tolerances so close that are hitting the tires and then of course backing back, right back off. So there's another speculation from one of the drivers. 53 laps to go. Pit stops coming up. Kevin Harvick now has led the most consecutive laps of anyone today. He's led the last 15 laps. Back up to this message and a word from our ABC stations. Come on.